and welcome back. The last time we met, I spoke about the major benefits of using Cisco Stackwise Virtual Technology on the Catalyst 9500. In this video, we'll go into some of the details on how these benefits can be achieved through Stackwise Virtual. First, we'll look at the Stackwise Virtual architecture and then see how this architecture provides high availability on the network. Stackwise Virtual forms a unified control plane architecture by assigning one device as active and another device as the hard standby. Both the devices play an active role when it comes to forwarding the traffic. The primary architectural or design feature of Stackwise Virtual is that it is a two node solution, which means that two Catalyst 9K switches are connected or a Stackwise Virtual link or SVL. Stackwise Virtual brings two switches together, forming a single logical switch. So now you have large number of ports of two switches available for you. And with Stackwise Virtual, you can manage it as a single entity. Of the two switches, the active switch is responsible for all the control plane communication, just like a bus. The other switch is the standby switch, which is like a hot standby. So with respect to high availability, let's talk about stateful switchover redundancy here. The Stackwise Virtual standby switch is just like a good soldier, always ready to take a charge if there's a fault on the active switch. To make sure the standby is as good as the boss, the configuration, forwarding, and state information are synchronized from the active switch to the standby switch right at the startup. Any changes to the Stackwise Virtual Active Switch are immediately synchronized to the standby switch. In the event of a switchover, disruption to network traffic is minimal. Next, let's take a look at the components of the Stackwise Virtual System. The Stackwise Virtual System comprises of three important actors. Number one, the Stackwise Virtual Link. Number two, the Dual Active Detection Link. Number three, the multi-chassis ether channel. Let's take a look at the roles each one of them play in the Cisco Stackwise Virtual Architecture. The first actor is the Stackwise Virtual Link or the SVL. So when the switch is powered up and the hardware is initialized, it looks for a configured SVL before the control plane is initialized. That's because the SVL plays the role of a connector between the two switches. It connects two switches in a stackwise virtual domain or regular ethernet. It enables communication or network ports to virtualize the system. The SVL also carries all the control and data traffic between these switching units. The next actor is the dual active detection link. What if both the switches in your stackwise virtual system become active active and operational at the same time? Both the switches will use the same IP addresses the same SSH keys and the same STP bridge IDs. In other words, you're looking at a dual active condition in your network, a conflict, if you will. This condition means only one thing, adverse effects on your network stability and possible disruption to your network communication. Here's where dual active detection link comes into play. It detects a dual active scenario and mitigates network instability. If a stackwise virtual link fails, the stackwise virtual standby switch initiates a switchover and takes over the role of the active switch immediately. This minimizes traffic disruption and maximizes the importance of dual active detection link. And finally, the third actor in the stackwise virtual architecture is the multi-chassis ether channel, which is just like a port channel which spans to two stackwise virtual switches with the neighboring switches. The beauty about this is you have all the links in the forwarding state and you have redundancy at the same time, doubling your bandwidth and giving you much needed link level redundancy. Coming up next is the configuration of stackwise virtual on Catalyst 9500.